all of a sudden, he's all over me, kissing and groping and groping and kissing. And believe me, I, at, at my memory of it was that nothing was said. He didn't say, oh, by the way, or I, I didn't go eek or, or help or whatever. It was just this silent groping going on. On Monday, three of the 19 women who have come out with sexual assault and harassment allegations against President Trump appeared on Megyn Kelly's show and participated in a press conference to discuss their stories again in hopes of igniting Congress to launch an investigation into Trump's misconduct. If they were willing to investigate Senator Franken, um, I think it's only fair that they do the same for Trump. These women have banded together to expose Trump yet again in what they deem as a new environment following the Harvey Weinstein scandal and ensuing allegations against powerful men from Hollywood to politics. But as our country undergoes a reckoning wherein we are finally listening and believing women's stories and punishing the men who have abused them, we remain unwilling or unable to move against Donald Trump, our president, who faces allegations from at least 19 women. 19 women who all share eerily similar stories of being kissed and groped with no warning and unquestionably without their consent. I gotta use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. I just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. I can do anything. And that's what Trump still thinks, that he can do anything, that he is untouchable despite touching all of these women. Kristen Anderson, who says he put his hand up her skirt. Mariah Biotto, who says he walked in on her and other Miss Teen USA contestants while they were changing. Rachel Crooks, who claims he kissed her on the mouth when they first met. Jessica Drake, who claims Trump kissed her without permission. Jill Harth, who says the now president pushed her against a wall and groped her, trying to get under her dress. Kathy Heller, who tells a similar story of being grabbed and kissed on the mouth. Nini Loxanen, who says Trump groped her and grabbed her butt. Jessica Leeds, who went on the Today Show to tell her story of Trump grabbing her breasts while trying to put his hand up her skirt. And the list goes on. Melinda McGillivray, groped. Natasha Stoinoff, pushed against a wall and forcibly kissed. Temple Taggart, forcibly kissed. Ivana Trump, raped. Karina Virginia groped. Cassandra Searles groped and propositioned. Summer Zervos groped and forcibly kissed. Yet the Trump administration continues to deny these claims, stating that the timing and absurdity of these false claims speak volumes and the publicity tour that has begun only further confirms the political motives behind them. The things that happened to us spanned decades, states, you know, all over. Like, what could we possibly have we, you know, colluded to come up with these tales that all sound so eerily similar? They sound eerily similar because they are. Trump was systematic in his abuse and used his quote unquote fame and stature to sexually assault women spanning decades and states. And while the Me Too movement has been a powerful arbiter for change, the issue of sexual assault seems to still be one of politics. Trump vehemently spoke out against Al Franken, a Democratic senator, yet provides his unwavering support for Republican Senate nominee and accused child molester Roy Moore. His endorsement of Roy Moore makes perfect sense for him because he was able to just deny you know, what we said, and that got him elected just fine. These allegations are undeniable. So as we celebrate the women who have come forward and broken the silence within the Me Too movement, we must remember that we have left these 19 women behind. 19 women who have bravely spoken up and relived the horrors of their abuse, only to watch their abuser rise to the most powerful position in the entire world. A power which has not been undermined by these allegations, or by admissions of wrongdoing doing, or even by the support of a fellow abuser, a child molester. If Al Franken, John Conyers, and Trent Franks were all compelled to resign over their sexual misconduct allegations, the president should too. Trump cannot be immune to the consequences of abusing women. We cannot hold the president to a different set of standards when it comes to sexual assault and the complete disregard of agency and respect for a population that makes up half of the country that he governs. If Trump does not resign, Congress must act.
And if Congress does not act, then we must rise up and stand up for what we know is right. For the women who have endured assault and abuse, and for every little girl out there who needs to know that her body is hers, and that no one, not even the President of the United States, has the right to touch it without her consent. This is not a partisan issue. This is a moral reckoning for our country to decide whether or not we want to be on the right side of history and hold our leaders accountable. It's time to speak up. Share this video with your friends. Follow me at Hannah Cranston. And as always, thanks for watching TYT.